Uh, and I'm also trying to approach it from the standpoint of engineering, you know, why certain things are engineered certain way in the Great Pyramid. And the, the best answer I've gotten so far is, and I'm looking at the Great Pyramid, and the chamber itself is granite. And the chamber has uh, in a corbelled ceiling. King's chamber? Yeah, King's chamber. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, why on earth would you make like corbelled cor in a ceiling? You know, why is this important? And to me, the answer is the only reason it's important if you want to uh, load the walls, the side walls of the chamber with the weight above and not the ceiling. Because let's say if a chamber is square, mm -hmm. you have load both on the side walls and on the ceiling. Yeah. And why, you know, would you want to load side walls but not the ceiling? Is like when you build a wave that oscillates between the walls mm -hmm. and um, you want that wave to bounce only between the walls and not between the ceiling and the floor. Mm. And and I'm thinking again, you know, why they use granite. So the thing about granite is it does not deform easily. That's why a yeah. bunch of um, like workbenches are made out of granite mm. for like in a machine shop you will always have like a granite slab that they use for measurements because if really? it, yes you didn't know that no, i did not know that yeah it's uh, like the most common use of granite in modern day machining is uh, various measurement i forget the term now is measurement desk or measurement table mm. um, but it's it's used for measurement because let's say you have a metal workbench and you put a part on it and you know, these days tolerances are, you know, microns. So you start measuring something, but heat, vibration, your metal surface, it will curve ever so slightly, and that's enough to mess up your measurements by a micron or two. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when you use your precision micrometer to check, you know, the tolerance on the, on the part, it's all messed up. So that was figured out like years ago, and now it's all made of granite because granite does not bend easily. You know, it's right keeps its shape regardless of... Mm -hmm. Vibration, temperature, pressure, yeah, you got it. Granite table, yeah. Whoa, on eBay, huh? Yeah, and they're 2700 bucks for a 10-inch thick granite work table. Yes, oh, they're massive shipping. because they're, Dude, they're super stable. We need one. And uh, that's the property of granite. You know, it does not bend, does not compress easily. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you know, not as easy as metals or sure. other. And I'm thinking, well, that's why, you know, the chamber was built out of granite because they wanted it to keep its shape. And when it's important, it's only important when you want to build resonance. Because if your chamber deforms, your resonance will go out of tune. Right. But if your chamber, you know, will not deform no matter what. Yeah. Then it will build a pretty good what resonance. What is it, an F sharp? The king, the king chamber vibrate when, when you... Something happens where I think Chris was explaining he was in there and then he took a, a a measuring device that measures the sound in there and tells you uh what note it is. And he said it was an F sharp, I believe. Yeah. So I do believe that. Oh, I was right. Wow. Yeah, F sharp. Okay. The King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid of Giza is primarily known for a, uh, uh, known to resonate at a frequency around 117 hertz which corresponds roughly to the musical note f f sharp acoustical engineers including tom delaney have found that the chamber and the granite sarcophagus within it have multiple resonant frequencies key findings include wow that's so wild huh. yeah. yeah it seems like it was functional man yeah i mean uh, clearly I, I, I believe that it was you know some kind of industrial installation i don't think it was a tomb no. But, you know, when I'm trying to analyze it, I'm trying to see, you know, the patterns that I, as an engineer, would recognize. And I mm. recognize this importance for resonance. I recognize why they use granite. And, and the fact that the ceiling was corbelled is telling me that it was important to have the wave bouncing between, you know, the walls. Yeah. As opposed to between the floor and the ceiling. And the other interesting, I think, observation about it is the chamber itself seems to have exploded yes because you know the blocks moved out of place which, it's a huge chunk that was blown out of this the, uh, yeah, the box in the which, middle of it which tells me it worked and it served its purpose so i think it was like a one-time deal mm. where it built you know the resonance it was supposed to and then <laughs> i'll tell you something else 
when uh, you know when you build the resonance at some point your system can no longer contain it right because it just you know starts falling apart and I think that's exactly what happened but mm -hmm. I think it was designed for this specific purpose because you know the shafts mm -hmm. the shafts were blocked by about five inches of granite Kate and Brink's door uh, they found at the top of it yeah so the uh, and in the uh, Queen's chamber if you remember yep, the shafts that was the Queen's chamber. They weren't even you know connected to the a, chamber right exactly so and, and that's a principle in engineering too that we find often like in the case of um, let's say fuses so you have some material left that's supposed to break when your signal exceeds the critical threshold so I think the uh, operating idea between the king's and queen's chamber was you build this resonance and when it reaches you know the threshold it breaks those slabs that were intentionally left in the shafts mm. and then you know the energy is released right so well there was in the shafts in the queen's chamber i believe there was two blocks that were blocking the end mm -hmm. the end, uh, edges or the right. ends of them and the king's chamber, the shafts, one of them, I think, goes straight out. And the other one does some weird mm -hmm. thing, uh, curve around the um, Grand Gallery and then shoots out the mm -hmm. side of the pyramid. Yeah. So so I do, <clears throat> do believe that the you know, queen's chamber, for that matter, was never used. You know, it was designed, but for whatever reason, they mm -hmm. <clears throat> they decided to build another one, the king's chamber. So you think they never used the shafts in the queen's chamber? No, I don't think Why? so. Why? Well, for two reasons. They were blocked off. Right. And then they never terminated on the outside. They did terminate. What no. do you mean? Uh, the queen chamber shafts, they yeah. terminate within the bulk of the pyramid. They yes, don't reach correct. the outside. Yes. They don't reach the outside. Right. Yes. But I think the queen chamber... So you think that was on accident? No, I think... Uh, you like, know you, like you think that they, that they built that and... Uh, they decided, oh, this isn't going to work. We need yes. to do two more. Yes. Basically, when I look at these pyramids as a whole, like every one of them, and you know, I, I listen to a bunch of lectures of other researchers who you know describe their ideas, I think the growing consensus is there was a lot of trial and error. Mm. And I think you know whoever was building this, you know, they were discovering things and they were trying things. So when I look at these various pyramids, I see evolutions in engineering thinking and engineering design. Yeah, and in the Great Pyramid, you know, we see it, we see two chambers, because the first chamber is positioned where you think it needs to be. It's like on the axis, it's down below. Sure. Yet, you know, they build another one that's offset and has got some additional elements to it. So, and they figured out it wasn't well, going to work. Uh, Steve, I don't know if you can find Chris Dunn's latest diagram from his new book, but he hypothesizes that the chambers in the queen's chamber or the shafts that go out of the queen's chamber do connect to the outside of the pyramid through uh like pits in the ground he thinks there were these open pits yeah. in the ground that they uh could have forced some sort of chemical into that basically went up into that chamber and like seeped through the door he thinks the limestone door because it wasn't a granite mm -hmm. door it mm -hmm. was a limestone door he thinks that the the chemical could have filtered through that door down into the shafts yeah and and here is a i guess i need to to give a disclaimer so what we're doing we're discussing ideas right so we're yeah. discussing hypotheses we're fantasizing right. <laughs>